Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to the next question, dealing with factoring. So we have to find an expression for the length, width, and perimeter of each of these rectangles by factoring the given area. So notice for all of these rectangles, we're given the expressions for the areas. So here the area is x squared plus 17x plus 72. Here it's x squared minus 5x plus 6. And then over here it's x squared minus x minus 30. So given those areas, we got to find the length, width, and perimeter. So how are we going to do that? Now, just the area of a rectangle in general, what is it? It's basically length times width, right? We know that in general for a rectangle. That's the formula for the area. Well, notice that the areas in this case, they are actual expressions. They're quadratic expressions. And so what we could do is we could take that expression, that quadratic expression, right? All of them are in the format x squared plus bx plus c. And then we can factor it, which would give us two factors that are multiplying. And then that could be the length and the width, right? Each of those respective factors. So that would solve part of the question, right? We would have a length, we would have a width. It wouldn't actually matter which one we choose as the length and width, they're interchangeable. Um, so we'd get the length and the width, and then we also have to find the perimeter. Now, what's the perimeter of a rectangle? Well, there are, if we draw out a rectangle, there's two lengths, there's two widths, right? So 2L plus 2. W. That's basically the formula for the um, perimeter of a rectangle. You could also write it as, you could factor out that two. You can have L plus W, right? Whichever formula you use here, I'll probably use this one over here, but you could also use this one. Uh, maybe for some of them, I'll use both just to show you that you could get the same answer with both of these, but this is the formula here we're gonna be using. So let's actually write that above just to have a reference, right? So that's basically the process. We're gonna factor the areas, get our length and width, and take our length and width, plug it into this formula to get an expression for the perimeter. So let's start off with the first um, rectangle here. We got x squared plus 17x plus 72. Right, so we got to factor this by decomposition. Notice we can't take anything out of this. There's no greatest common factor we could take out. That's actually the first thing you always check for. There's no numbers we could take out. There's no variables we could take out. So if we go into decomposition, A value is one, the B value is 17, and then the uh, C value is 72. And then what's the next step? AC, 72 times one would give us 72. And then what we do is we find two numbers. Let's actually do it on the side here. We do, we find two numbers that multiply to that AC value of 72 and add up to that B value of 17. So hopefully you understand what's going on over here. So hopefully you've gone through the previous videos where we covered a bunch of examples dealing with decomposition. If you didn't watch those, please make sure you do, just so you understand what I'm doing here, the process, because there's a lot of carryover from those previous videos. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to follow in order, you can go to the description box. There's a link where it will take you to the course website where all the videos are organized in order. All right, so going back to this, what two numbers here would multiply to 72 and add up to positive 17? That would be nine and eight, right? Those would work out. Now, because the A value is one, we know as a shortcut that our final answer is gonna be X plus nine, X plus eight. But in case your teacher wants you to show the full work, let's decompose that B value into those two values that we found. Make sure you put the X's here, right? 17X is 9X plus 8X. Then we factor by grouping. We could take out an X from these two. Then we could take out an eight from these two. We should be left with an X plus nine. Then we could take out an X plus nine and we're left with an X plus eight. All right, so exactly what we were aiming for. So we took this area, 
and we factored into these two factors. So this is like the length times the width right there. So if we label this on the rectangle, we would have, let's say, let's do the length as the larger one. And then we got x plus 8 over here. Again, these are interchangeable. It doesn't matter. But um, just to keep it to scale, this is longer than this. So x plus 9 is going to be larger than x plus 8. Right? So that's the length. That's the width right there. So we answered part of the question, but we also got to get the perimeter. And what's the formula for the perimeter? It's up there. 2L plus 2W. So what we would do, 2 times the length, which is x plus 9, we got to put that in brackets, plus 2 times the width, which is x plus 8. That has to be in brackets as well. And then from here, we just expand, right? So it would be 2x plus 18 plus... Uh, 2x plus 16, then like terms, 4x, and then these are like terms, which would give us 34. So that ends up being the expression for the perimeter. So let's write that. Uh, let's actually fit it in right there on the top. So the perimeter of this would be 4x plus 34 like that, right? If you use the other formula, for the rest of these, I'm going to be using this formula, but in case you want to see how the other formula would work, what you would do is P equals 2 times the length is x plus 9 plus the width of x plus 8. Like that. And then what you do, this bracket, you can simplify x plus x is 2x, 9 plus 9 is 17. And then distributing that 2 inside that bracket, you'd end up with 4x plus 34. Right? Personally, I prefer this one over here. Right? But whichever way you do it, perimeter is 4x plus 34 for this first rectangle. Right? So that's the process for all of these. So moving on to the next one, we're given an area of x squared minus 5x plus 6. Can't factor anything out. So if we go into decomposition, a value is 1. Let's actually move this a little bit over here. So the a value is 1. The b value is negative 5. The c value is positive 6. Multiply the a and the c, which would give us positive 6. What two numbers? multiply to AC, which is 6, and add up to that B value of negative 5. So in this case, it would be negative 3, negative 2, right? Negative 3 times negative 2 would give us positive 6. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is like negative 3 minus 2, which would give us negative 5. So both of those work. So we know because the A value is 1 as a shortcut, our final answer is going to just be those two values. If this A value is not 1, the shortcut doesn't work, right? You're going to have to go through the whole process, but the A value is 1. is just a nice way to check your final answer, right? But let's go through the whole process. So this is going to be the final answer, but if we go through the whole process, we decompose uh, that B value into those two terms, factor by grouping. Here we could take out, there's a negative, so we take out a negative value, and then we could take out a 2 from both of these. So we'd be left with x minus 3, right? Positive 6 divided by negative 2 gives us negative 3. Take out x minus 3, and we're left with x minus 2, just as expected. Okay, so the um, length and width are those two values here. So out of these, the larger value is um, this one, right? We're subtracting less, so this would be x minus 2. Let's make the width x minus 3. Again, it doesn't matter. These are interchangeable. I'm just trying to make it to scale for the diagram. This is longer than this right there. Um, so that's the length and the width. And then if we want the perimeter, we use that formula. 2L plus 2W. 2 times x minus 2 plus 2 times x minus 3. Distribute, distribute, 
which will give us 4x minus 10, like that, right? So we end up with this perimeter, uh, like that. Okay, so that is it for part B. And then finally, part C, uh, we got x squared minus x minus 30. Can't factor anything out here, so let's go straight into the decomposition. A is 1, the B value is negative 1, the C value is negative 30. A times C, negative 30. Find two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add up to that B value of negative 1. Right, so what would that be? It would be negative six and positive five. Negative six and positive five works, right? Negative six times five gives us negative 30. Negative six plus five gives us negative one. Because that A value is one, we know as a shortcut, that's gonna be the final answer for factoring this. But if we go through the whole process, decompose that, um, that B value into those two factor by grouping. In these we could take out a positive five like that. And then we could take out an X minus six and we're left with an X plus five as expected, right? So those are our lengths and our widths. This one's larger, so let's make that the length. This one's smaller, let's make that the width right there. Um, give me a sec here. Yes, it looks all good. And then finally the perimeter, 2L plus 2W, two times the length plus two times the width. is this, 10 minus 12 is negative two. So that would be the expression for the perimeter of this rectangle over here. All right, so fairly standard process. Don't get confused because now we're dealing with shapes or it's kind of a word problem, right? You just have to make sense of it. If you're given an area like this, you could factor it in order to get a length and a width expression. And then once you have that length and width expression, you can find the perimeter expression.